Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing the new movie review this week. It's called The Expandables 3, a third sequel of The Expandables franchise. It stars Sylvester Stallone, Jason Statham, Antonio Banderas, Jet Li, Wesley Snipes, Dolph Lundgren, Kelsey Grammer, Randy Culture, Terry Crews, Killing Lutz, Wanda Rossi, Lynn Powell, Victor Ortez, Robert Davy, Mel Gibson, Harrison Ford, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's directed by Patrick Hughes. The movie begins set on a train. The Expendables was led by Barney Ross, who was played by Sylvester Stallone, along with Lee Christmas, Gunnar Jetson, and Toll Road, all played by Jason Statham, Dolph Lundgren, and Randy Culture. Their mission was to go after a former member of the team named Dr. Death, who was played by Wesley Snipes. Yeah, they started to have a joke based on Dr. Jack's cohort game. Well, apparently Dr. Death is a knife specialist and a team medic who just had been transferred from a military prison for three years on a train, mostly because of tax evasion. Yeah, this was a joke that they finally posted in to become as we speak because Wesley Snipes, in real life, they got arrested for tax evasion. Yeah, feel free. Anyway, they recruit Doc to assist him to, to intercepting a shipment of bombs that's meant to be delivered to a warlord in Somnia. Arriving there, they reunited with Hal Caesar, who's played by Terry Crews, who directed him to a drop point where Ross is surprised to find out that the armed trader provided the bombs is led by Conrad Stonebakes, yeah, who happens to be the co-founder of the Expandables team, yeah, played by Mel Gibson. He later betrayed the team to profit off illegal weapons dealing with all the other um, bad guys out there, which leads to the death of several of their team members. And that's what also leads to the biggest problem was when when Hell Caesar winds up getting injured. So, once he was rushed to the hospital, hoping to recover, a CIA operative named Max Drummer, who's played by Harrison Ford, had gave Barney an arrest on a mission to bring him down to the Hag International Criminal Court to try for war crimes. Blaming himself, he decided that he doesn't want anybody on the team to be killed, so as a result, Barney decided to, to leave to Las Vegas when he listed a retired mercenary named Bonnie Pard, who was played by Kelsey Grammer, to help him find a new team of young, younger mercenaries to pursue stone bigs. The recruits includes an ex-marine named John Smiley, who was played by Killen Lutz, a nightclub bouncer named Luna, who was played by Wanda Rousey, a computer expert named Thorne, who was played by Glenn Powell, and, and a weapons expert named Mars, who was played by Victor Ortiz. It also includes a skilled sharpshooter named Galgo, who was played by Antonio Banderas, advocates to include in the team but Ross unfortunately turns him down. So in a favor Ross's rival Trent Mouser, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, had returned a favor for Ross who has traced Stonebacks to Romeo where he is set to make an arms deal. So Ross and his new recruits infiltrate an office building at a meeting place where Stonebacks is located and, and once they finally found him along with all the other dealers out there. They finally took him until suddenly the Stonebag somehow came up with a, another plan to go to kidnap his new recruits you know, leave him, leave Barney Ross behind. So, not to mention the fact that you know, later on, Stonebacks had sent Ross a video challenging Ross to come after them. Well, he finally gave his location in the country of Mrs. Stan where 
Apparently they've all been caught. So as a result, he decided to hire the entire team again. And so they teamed up and finally stopped Stonebakes from killing them. And of course leads to one of the biggest battles at almost towards the end of the movie where lots of bad guys start to come around shooting you know, shooting the entire place and you know, set up some bombs on the buildings and so on and so forth you know, and you get Max Drummer on the helicopter with, with Yin Yang you know, who's played by Jet Li and then they also go with, with Trench yeah, and there's even that famous line where he says, kind of like from the movie Predator, Get to the chopper! No! Yeah. And, and it also leads to the last scene, which apparently was cut really short. It was the battle between Stallone and, and Mel Gibson. Uh, and that's pretty much the movie. And it, I don't know. I love the first two Expendables films. They were great. It was definitely what I expected from a film like this where they actually team up with all your favorite actors that you grew up with watching all these action movies and you know you know you really want a film like this where this is exactly it brings back to all the days when when we used to have old school action films that you really enjoy and I mean as, as silly as they were, they were wor definitely worth watching. If, but unfortunately, the third movie, without a doubt, um, for better or worse, it was a complete disappointment. And it really was, too. It, it suffered from a weak, weak script, too many um, punchlines that they throw in, which some of them were funny, but others weren't. And then they even managed to throw in some unnecessary young actors which I didn't even care for because most of them really suck that includes uh, Kellen Lutz in the cast why on earth did they have to cast this guy he was so awful in those fucking Twilight movies and in that terrible Legends of Hercules movie that I had to sit through yeah I saw that terrible film it's not not the not the um, the one with the rock, which I definitely would rather watch than that piece of shit that that came out before that one. And um, Ron and Rossi is okay though. I mean, coming from an MMA fighter, I think you know at least we'll probably get to see more of her in the future. She's already going to be set for another Fast and the Furious sequel, so that's good to know. Half of the cast were okay, though. I'm, it's great to see Mel Gibson once again playing the villain after Machete Kills and and all these other films he's been in for a while. Harrison Ford, I thought he worked pretty well, even though this was basically his replacement to Bruce Willis. Yeah. Antonio Banderas, I gotta admit, he was pretty funny. Not... Not that I expect from him, because, you know, I, I always do love him when he does all these uh, different acts that he does, but there are times when I think he, he, he can be really annoying. I think he was supposed to play the role that originally Jackie Chan was going to play. And yes, Jackie Chan was originally going to sign in this movie, along with Steven Seagal and Nicolas Cage as well. Yeah, it's such a shame. They couldn't get these actors. Instead, we get stuck with these these other type of hacks in this film. And I just didn't like the fact that this movie has given a PG-13 rating. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that sometimes, but you know, there's always going to be a problem. You know, when it gives when a movie like this gets its its PG-13 rating, mostly so it can focus on the young audience department. It happened with Robocop 3, it happened with Die Hard, and it definitely happened with all the other movies that were originally R-rated. But don't get me wrong though, I did love Live Free or Die Hard. Yeah. At least that was a decent sequel, considering it's PG-14 rating. Certainly better than the fifth one. <laughs> yeah. Boy, did I, I had to suffer from that last year. 
Yeah, and originally it was going to be directed by John Wu. So, when they were going to do this, though, I, I must say, if they actually had these actors with the director, it would be an awesome sequel. In fact, it would be even better than the first two. But boy, what went wrong there. Yep, and the film was really over long, too. They gave it two hours and six minutes worth of nothing. But lots of shootouts, you know, tons of bombs, tons of tanks, helicopters, you name it. And uh, they, they really went over the top with, with its violence. It's also pretty tame, too. They cut off all the blood in, into this movie. I could not believe it. Yes, all that CGI gory blood that they throw in, like they did in the first two films. It was just... It was just so tame, it didn't work. I mean, yes, there were blood in the film, too. Mostly blood from from the lips, the, the head, and everything. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty tame. Even they try harder to do that. And the dialogue was pretty lame at times. Um, yeah, this, this whole bullying thing that they throw it into it. I, I don't like that. That's just, that's just stupid. I'm not so sure if I would say that this was the worst movie of the year because I think I've seen so many bad ones that just came out this year. I would say it's just weak. It's a weak sequel. It's just sad that this had to be what I think it had to be. They were claiming that this was going to be the last sequel. Well, if they do make a fourth one or a fifth one, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I hope they get it right this time. Yeah, maybe bring back some of the actors that they're supposed to be approaching. It's just ridiculous why we got stuck with the, with this crap. Um, also, um, I thought Kelsey Grammer was okay in the role. I mean, not what I expected from him because he's he's usually good in, in TV shows like Cheers and. Frazier and all that. But it makes you wonder, what was he doing in this picture? Exactly. I think he's better off just doing other projects instead of this one. He's not bad, though. I think he was just miscast. Oh, uh, I don't know. This movie deserves better. So anyway, I give Expandables 3 two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.